see Carrie Urkel here in the front. Um, today is the day that we are planting our sunflower seeds that, or transplanting our sunflower seeds that we planted on Easter. We put those little seeds in the ground. Some of them made it, and then we um, also had um, some others come from another location, a donation that came in. So if there are kids here today at our 9 o'clock service and they want to go plant sunflowers with Carrie, I encourage them to meet uh, Carrie at the back of the worship center right now. There they go. Um, to head on outside in this oh so warm summer weather to plant um, our sunflowers from Easter. It's appropriate that they are doing this today because we are starting our worship series called Lessons from the Grove. Over the next five weeks, we are going to be looking at what trees and what nature can teach us about life and pairing that with different scripture passages I'm going to start by telling you a story yesterday about yesterday. My husband and I went for a walk yesterday morning. I had been gone for the week um, up in St. Cloud at annual conference. And uh, feeling like my husband and I just needed to connect a little bit, we went for a walk yesterday morning pretty early. We have uh, about a 30, 40 foot maple at the edge of our yard right along the roadway. And as we were walking along the road, Uh, Underneath that tree, I looked down and I saw something like this. (laughs) The ground of the road was just covered with all of these little helicopter maple seeds that, of course, are dropping now from last year's harvest so that they can put out new ones, and the ground was just covered with them. So I started to pick them up. I hadn't written my sermon yet, and I was like, oh, there's my sermon right there in these little maple seeds. Now, of course, uh, these seeds that landed on the road, they are not going to grow into baby maples because they're on the road. But every year we do get little baby maples that come from this tree. Some of them, some of these seeds find their way to a bare dirt spot in our yard or they find their way into our landscape and they put down roots and put up a shoot and sure enough we've got little baby maples growing everywhere. Now, my husband gets really protective of these baby maples. He tries to protect them from the kids mowing the lawn, and he tries to protect them from his wife, who thinks that they're weeds and tries to pull them out of the landscape. God forbid we would want a 30-foot maple growing five feet from our house. (laughs) Uh, But he gets protective, and he tries to save these little baby maple trees. I'm always in awe when I look at an acorn or a maple seed, or any uh, pine, little pine seeds that come from pine cones. You look at that little tiny pod and that little tiny seed, and you think, inside of that are the makings of a 30, 40, 50 foot tree. And that little tiny thing, God has put into it everything it needs to grow into a tree. Well, not exactly everything it needs to grow into a tree. Of course, there is certain conditions that need to come into play in order for that seed to grow. Seeds on the road aren't going to grow. Only those that end up in a bare spot in our yard actually grow because it actually needs to get buried. It needs to get pushed into the ground. And there's different ways that the seed can get buried. We have deer in our yard. So um, if a deer came along with its strong hoof and it pushed that seed into the ground, that would be one way that it gets buried. Um, We have some dogs from the neighborhood who like to do their business in our yard. So a dog could come up into our yard and, and it's trying to cover its uh, droppings. It might kick up some dirt and bury a seed. If our lawnmower wheel went over it, it could push it into the ground. Paul and I, when we're gardening, we're moving dirt around. That could be something that buries it. If we got a really hard rain, the dirt would get all stirred up and become muddy and that seed might sink down into the ground and become buried. If a strong wind comes up, it might kick up the dirt, cover up that seed so that it becomes buried. Some kind of condition comes along and meets this seed, and it gets buried, and there it rests in the ground. 
Our scripture today is about a man who gets buried. His name is Lazarus. Anybody familiar with the Lazarus story? A man named Lazarus who got buried. He and his two sisters, who were named Mary and Martha, were friends with Jesus. They lived in a town called Bethany, just outside of Jerusalem. And the Gospel of John tells us that when Jesus was kind of in their neighborhood or in their neck of the woods, Jesus would stop by and see these close friends of his and spend some time with them. And Jesus was doing that, was with these close friends at one point, uh, spending some time with them. But then Jesus left. And after Jesus left, Lazarus got sick and got ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus and said, Lord, he whom you love is ill. Well, Jesus really didn't think that this illness must have been too serious because he didn't really do anything about it for a little while. When Jesus heard this message, he said, this illness doesn't lead to death. After having heard that Lazarus was ill, Jesus stayed two days longer in the place that he was. Didn't get too alarmed over it. But after those two days, Jesus must have felt some kind of stirring inside of him and realized that something was wrong. And he told his disciples that it was time to pack up, to head back to uh, Lazarus and Mary and Martha's neighborhood. Now, the disciples were a little reluctant about this. They started to argue with Jesus, telling Jesus, no, I don't know if we should do that. Jesus, don't you remember last time we were in that neck of the woods? You almost got yourself stoned. I don't know if we should be heading back to this area. But Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So off they went back. And when they got there, they learned that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Certainly, he was dead. And Martha went out to meet Jesus. She kind of gives Jesus a little bit of a scolding. She confronts him. She says, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, oh, I know, I know, he will rise again in the resurrection on that last day. I know that. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Jesus then calls for the other sister, Mary, and she comes. And together, the three of them all go to the tomb. It was a cave, and the stone was lying against it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. And he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And the dead man came out his hands and his feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in cloth, Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. The story of Lazarus is a full 44 verses in the Bible. This is the framework for it. Sometimes when we hear a story like this in the Bible, we can get stuck on whether this story is literally true or not. Did Lazarus actually die? Or was he alive when they put him in the tomb and then he just came out? Was he actually risen from the dead if he was dead? Is this actually true? And it really doesn't matter to me where you land on that. I'm guessing if we took a poll around the room, some of you would say that it is literally true. Some of you would say that it's not literally true. That's not really what matters. I just encourage us not to get stuck on those type of wonderings. Because if we get stuck on those type of wonderings, we are going to miss the bigger point, the bigger message, the bigger meaning in this story. In fact, if we were to go through all 44 verses of this story, I could point out place after place after place where Jesus is talking about metaphor, where Jesus is talking about different forms of life and death. 
The reality is that we can be factually alive, but feel completely dead inside. We can be moving and walking around this world, but we might not be having any spiritual movement or emotional movement in our lives. Our bodies might be working perfectly, but our hopes and dreams might be buried in a cave. We can be physically alive, but spiritually dead. And it's possible that we get that way because there's conditions in life which can make us feel like we have been buried. Just like that little maple seed, something comes along and pushes us into the ground and buries us. Maybe a person with a tough foot or strong arm or a tough attitude comes along and stomps us into the ground. Maybe the rain of life pours down on us and it stirs up all the dirt in our life and now we feel stuck in the mud. Maybe the winds of life blow in and cover up our true selves and now we don't even know who we are anymore. Like that maple seed, when it's in the ground, I sometimes wonder, does it think to itself, am I ever going to grow into what God made me to be, this 30 to 40 foot tree that was designed inside of me? Will I ever become that? When the conditions of life have come into our life and we find ourselves buried, do we wonder sometimes, will I ever grow into the person that God wants me to be? But our scripture today gives us an answer for that through Jesus' words. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Will never die. It's interesting to note that after Jesus says this, Martha's like, yeah, 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 I know, that whole day of the resurrection thing, that whole heaven thing, I get that. After we physically die, we get to come back to life. And Jesus is like, no, 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 that's what I am, I am not talking about that. I am talking about resurrection here on earth, resurrection here and now. When the hard stuff of life buries us, the rejection and failure and transitions and separation and and sin and fear and hurt, When all of those things in our life bury us, we get to remember that we get to have resurrection here on earth. And that's the lesson from the grove today. When you think you've been buried, you've actually just been planted. At some point, that little maple seed burst forth with a sprout. Somehow that little, that little seed knows that there is light up above and it sends out a shoot that wiggles through all that dirt until it pops out of the surface again. Church, we have an awesome Savior. Amen to that. We have an awesome Savior. We have a Savior that promises us new life and resurrection. Through our trust in Jesus, we get to have resurrection after this physical body dies and we go to heaven. And we get to have resurrection now here on earth at those times in our life where we feel spiritually dead. It doesn't mean that we are never going to be buried We are going to be buried. That is just the nature of life. But what it does mean is that when we get buried, we can remember that there is light out ahead of us. There is light above us. Because of our trust in Jesus, we can hold on to hope that we are going to reach the surface again. Because of our trust in Jesus, we know that we are going to pop out and live a new life. 
Church, this is what it means to be resurrection people. As Christians, we are resurrection people. Amen.